Today is day four of our 10 days through the book of 1 Samuel. Today we read two short chapters, 1 Samuel chapters 11 and 12. And I want to begin by reading to you uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 20 to 25. Uh, by the way, if you're not in the habit of doing so, could I ask you please to like the video? And then if you're inclined to do so, also hit that share button and share it with others. So 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 20 to 25, these are the words of Samuel, the closing words of, of Samuel today um, to the children of Israel after he has rebuked them again for having requested a king. And he, he says this, do not fear you have done all this wickedness, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside, for then you would go after empty things which cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. These are two interesting chapters when you read them side by side. Because in chapter 11, you are tempted to think that all things are going extremely well for Israel. Uh, this is a seeming victory for the nation and for their new king. Saul has defeated the enemies who were threatening the men of Jabesh Gilead. Uh, so he's functioning as king now. He's marching out in, victorious in battle. God is giving them victory. And in fact, not only that, but we see Saul and Samuel working together in harmony in chapter 11. This is the very early stages of Saul's Reign And it seems to go so well. Uh, Samuel, of course, fulfilled the other two major roles in Israel's national life. He was both prophet and priest in the nation. And Saul is king. So we've got prophet, priest and king working together in the nation. And there's military victory and success. And you think, man, things are going great. This is wonderful. And then you, you hit chapter 12. And right after this amazing victory and all this unity, Samuel then gives this long speech of how sinful it was for the children of Israel to request this king in the first place. He reminds them of how sinful it was. Uh, he says, you know, just because God's given you this victory, it doesn't mean that it wasn't sinful. What was sinful with God is still sinful with God. And that is a, a, a message that all of us must hear. God doesn't change his standards. He might be patient and gracious, but he doesn't change his standards. And so not all was well. And in those verses that I read you, uh, Samuel is operating as both prophet and priest. He is speaking the word of God to the people of Israel. He's telling them, you have sinned in asking for a king. And then he is operating as priest. He is saying, I won't cease to pray for you. And he is encouraging them to continue following the Lord. Now, I want to just make two short applications today from, from that interplay between the great victory and then the rebuke. And, and then the encouragement from the priest. The first one is this. Just because things are going well in your life, that is no guarantee of the favor and pleasure of God upon you. You know, worldly success, whether it's with your health or with your business or in your relationships or in your sporting career or whatever, just because you are successful in this world is absolutely no guarantee that God is with you, that God is pleased with you. Um, and in fact, the reverse is true. Just because things are going badly for you and you are struggling, that is no guarantee that God is displeased with you. You know, God's ways in our lives are more complex than that. There was a day when Jesus was walking down the road with his disciples and they saw a man who had been born blind and his disciples drew this hard line between people's lot in life and their sinfulness, their, their disfavor in the, in the sight of God. They said to Jesus, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus corrected that whole worldview. He said, no, 
it was not this man who sinned, nor his parents who sinned, but he was born blind so that the works of God could be displayed in him. This was for the glory of God. And then Jesus healed this, this man and was glorified in it. It had nothing to do with anybody who sinned. And so we can't draw this analogy. Just because things are going well for you doesn't mean God is pleased with you. Sometimes it's just the patience and grace of God that is allowing all of your successes. But in the words of Samuel, if you continue to do wickedly in your life, sooner or later you will be swept away. You and all the things in which you trust. Then the second application that I want to draw from this today is about the nature of God himself, that God is gracious. God doesn't want to judge you. He doesn't want to take away all the things that he's blessed you with, all his goodness and kindness toward you. God is pleased to be good to you because God is good and he is generous and kind and patient and gracious. God is a generous God and he gives us all things richly to enjoy. You know, you may have made mistakes in the past, and if you're honest, you know you have, as I know I have. And you may remember your sin, but just because of the mistakes and sins of your past, that doesn't mean that you are now consigned to a life where your future will be cursed because of your past. What the grace of God means is that sin can be forgiven, that the things you've done can be washed away in the blood of the king, prophet, priest of Israel, the Lord Jesus Christ, your king, your prophet, your priest. He died on a hill outside Jerusalem 2000 years ago, and he took your sin and punishment upon himself. And then he rose from the dead so that you could be victorious over sin. So all these things can be washed away and forgiven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close today's devotion by reading those words that we began with from Samuel. I'm going to read them to you again. But I pray that God will give you spiritual ears to hear these words as if they were spoken to you by Jesus, your prophet and your priest. Do not fear. You have done all this wickedness, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord. But serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside, for then you would go after empty things which cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you one of his people. Moreover, as for me, Far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king.